Okay, so you now have a prototypical implementation of an actor critic method. I, I uh, as I mentioned before, to know exactly what to use for uh, the critic um, and to have more details, I recommend um, actually three papers. Uh, we recommend A3C, uh, PPO, and generalized advantage estimation, right? Um, well, let's go into more kind of software advice when you're implementing these algorithms. What I'm gonna show you here is uh, based on an algorithm called A3C, asynchronous advantage actor critic. Um, and in this case, you have a uh, network. Uh, you, you probably have two, obviously, the actor and the critic, but to simplify, you have a network. Uh, and then you have multiple workers. Now, notice this is not agents. These are not agents. These are workers. Um, sometimes you see out there that these are referred to as agents. That is not correct in the sense of uh, A3C. Um, each worker, which is going to be a process in your, in your computer, um, typically you are limited by the number of CPUs that you have. So you, the more CPUs you have in your computer, the more workers you can add, and then you're going to plateau um, as you add more and more uh, based on the number of CPUs again. But each of these workers can have a copy of the environment that you're trying to solve. So if you're playing chess in a multi-agent game, you would have the two sides, right? You would have the worker controlling one environment, the other worker, the other environment, and so on. These environments are, again, independent. And as they... Um, it, with that setup, uh, they're going to have a, let's call it a buffer. They, they're going to be keeping up some amount of experiences, right? And then in that case, it's going to look like this. Worker 2 is collecting samples. Then worker 1, everybody's collecting samples. Once you hit the limit, <clears throat> you um, calculate gradients and then pass them to update the network uh, in a asynchronous fashion. Worker two is doing it now, worker one is doing it now, and so on. Now, if you're a software engineer, you're probably telling yourself, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're just like, no, no mutex, no, no synchronization point, no nothing. Yes, that's exactly how this algorithm works. And I recommend the paper to read the paper if you're planning to implement this. They justify why this is actually a good thing and so on. But this is the, the implementation details. Again collect data and asynchronously update that network. Now you can have a different case, and this actually is uh, referred to as A2C. Now A3C to A2C, the difference is 1C, no, 1A. <laughs> and uh, that A is uh, asynchronous. So A2C is no longer asynchronous, right? But it's still an actor critic. Uh, uh, advantage actor critic method. So the in A to C, this, there's a synchronization point that uh, you use to collect gradients from everybody and then so that the network updates everybody at once. Again, you stop the updates until you have all of it and then you push everything back out at once so that the uh, workers can now use the same policy in every single uh, new environment for rollouts, right? So you have the environment, you have the worker sampling the policy, and then you're collecting data that is going to be used here, and so on. Now, there is no such paper as A2C. Uh, A2C actually has a blog post uh, because A2C was a response by uh, OpenAI to the folks at DeepMind after they published the A3C paper. So the, um, they, they had some arguments as to how uh, using this synchronization point was better for when you had a GPU and in other, in other cases. So I recommend you read that blog post if you're considering between these two algorithms. But um, if you have, if you don't have a, a GPU, if you don't have access to a GPU, A3C, the Asynchronous Advantage Actor Critic, can be a good choice for your uh, multi-agent uh, uh, implementation uh, for, for, to solve the multi-agent problem. 